what you should have been getting so far is that all of the chapters are about different blocks coming home from school and each block there's a different group of kids who walk down that block to come home from school but all of the kids so far except one all go to the same middle school they all go to the same public middle school and take different blocks home and it's about each of their adventures on each block and how they intertwine even and but also are so different even while going to the same middle school so this street that we're going to read about and the group of kids on this street are called Porto Ave. How to look both both ways. Fatima Moss talks to only one person on her way home from school. And before she talks to that person, she keeps a checklist of all the things on her journey that have changed. And all the things that have stayed the same. That one person and their sameness or differentness included. This is that checklist. One, bell rings for five seconds. 2. 28 students, 29 including me, dash from Miss Broom's English class. Difference. Today, Trista Smith and Britton Burns ran faster than everyone. Almost knocked over Sam Mosby. So remember, those are the two kids from our last chapter. 3. I take off. 4. The whole school crowds into the hallway. 5. It's so noisy I can't hear myself think. 6. I stop in my locker to get this notebook, which I keep where it's safe, so I can hear myself think. 7. The combination to my lock is the same. 8. I get it wrong. 9. I panic and think someone has switched my lock, which means I may never get my notebook. 10. I try the combination again, and it works. 11. The combination to my lock is the same. 12. I grab this notebook, get the books I'll need for homework, which is usually none because I usually get all my homework done before school is over. Difference, but today I have homework. English, Ms. Broom, wants us to imagine ourselves as objects. Any object we want and write about it. Doesn't require a book, though. 13. I head from my locker to the school doors between 77 and 84 steps, depending on if Miss Walkley is yelling at anyone in the middle of the hallway. Today, she was yelling at Simeon Cross for running down the hall with Kenzie Thompson on his back. Again, technically not a difference. Today, it took 81. 14. Exit the building. The double doors are always open. 15. Six school buses out front. Two lines of cars for pickup. Mr. Johnson is directing traffic. 16. Between 86 and 94 steps to the corner where the crossing guard, Miss Post, stands. 17. Hi, Fatima, she says. Difference. Today, she said. Hey, Fatima. 18. Miss Post's son, Canton, sits at the stop sign in the corner holding a broom with no broomstick. It's weird. But not weird because he's always there. 19. I keep walking straight. Don't have to cross the street. 20. I count the signs. Already one stop sign. Hydrants and major cracks in the sidewalk. Not all the cracks. That would be too hard. Too many, but the big ones. 21. Don't walk too fast. Have to take note of all the houses, too. How they look. 22. They all look the same. They all look like they're made of graham crackers. They all look like the houses I drew when I was six. A box with a triangle on top, except bigger. They all have big windows. I think they all have beige carpet inside. And a front room no one sits in. 23. I know there are 19 of these houses from the crossing guard's corner to my house. 24. My house is number 20. 25. My house look, looks exactly the same as others. It also has beige carpet inside. And a front room no one sits in. 26. Because of that, I don't really have to pay too much attention to the houses. I can just count the signs. 27. School crossing is the first sign. A picture of an adult and a child, I think. Weird, because kids cross by themselves. 28. Look both ways. 29. One way sign. Right at the beginning. Always there. I still look both ways. 30. The speed limit is 15. There's a sign that says so. 31. There are four stop signs. One at each end of the block. 32. There are five houses on each block. I don't know any of the people who live in any of them. That's the same. 33. I wonder if any of them see me walk past every day with this notebook. If they count me and say, same. 34. I wonder if all the houses are empty like mine. People have to work to pay bills. Graham cracker houses cost a lot of money, I think. So does green grass and bushes. And people who cut that grass and trim those bushes. Difference. There's a chunk of roses snatched out of house number 8's rose bush. Doesn't look like a mistake either. 35. I've been counting cracks. I've learned to look up and down at the same time. Look both ways. 36. By the time I reach house number 8, I have stepped over only 6 cracks on the sidewalk. 
six big crats. Big enough that if you don't know, they're there, you'll trip. 37. I meet Benny at the same place. I meet her every day, the same place I met her months ago. Doing what she does every day, and was doing months ago. Singing. Whew. Benny Austin sings old songs like their new songs. She also does old dances like their new dances. Wears old clothes like their new clothes. Fatima met her on the first day as a walker. Fatima's mother and father had given her strict instructions on what to do and which way to go. Easy instructions to follow, because Fatima only had to go straight. One way down Portal Avenue. No stopping, no talking. Eyes up, looking both ways. Eyes up, which is why Fatima tripped on one of those big, six big cracks where the sidewalk split. A lightning bolt of separation. One part lifted just enough to be annoying and dangerous. Fatima stubbed her toe, then went flying, but only after a few stumbles and bumbles and stumble bumbles. Like her mind was trying to convince her body to stay grounded, but her body wouldn't be held down. Wanted to leap, wanted to catch air. Her body won. She took flight, but only for a second. Then she took fall. Fatima crashed onto the sidewalk, the skin on her knees scraping off into stinging red strips. It was the kind of fall that requires a person to lie still for a moment. Let the experience wash over them like a wave of boiling water. So Fatima lay there for maybe six seconds, which were five seconds too many, because a bus had pulled up and stopped at the stop sign. And as Fatima heard the clacking sound of the windows on the bus lowering, clack, 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 Fatima knew that 15 miles an hour would be much slower than she thought it would be, that it was more like five miles an hour, no miles an hour. Wow, a boy from the bus yells. This was followed by a series of other cornball zingers involving eating it, biting it, and dive after five, even though it was just past three in the afternoon. Pay attention or you'll lose your life, one killed yet yelled all Fatima remembered about that kid was his lisp, that the th he put on, lose, made it sound like luth, and the spit that flew from his mouth, big enough for Fatima to see it. But it was the kid behind him who caught her attention more. A boy who sat in his seat with the window up, thick ropes of hair spurting out from his head like an antenna. He held the notebook to his face, peeked over it, and she could tell that behind the notebook, he wasn't laughing. Not at all. By the time the bus passed her, Fatima had started to get up. Her knees were buzzing, bloody, and each move, each step made her draw in short gusts of air. And then she heard a long, drawling voice. The kind of voice that was deep for no reason. The voice was singing. Singing in a tone that most would consider sanging. But it wasn't exactly good or bad, but enthusiastic and better than the bus. That's for sure. Get ready, the voice attached to a woman sang, shouted. She was bopping up the street, pumping her arms as if banging on the biggest invisible drum set ever imagined. Offbeat. Not a big woman, not too small either, just somewhere in the middle, which was the only way she could have barely fit the blazer she had on. Green. A school patch shown on the breast pocket. It was filthy. White shirt wet with sweat. Soft pink pants with creases so sharp down the front that it looked like she could cut the air with each step. I'm mad. That's a fact. Get ready for the big paycheck. And then, in a higher tone, she repeated, The big payback. Then, spin move. Fatima, unsure of who this lady was, or what she was about, jumped up, grabbed her backpack, and limped on. And the lady limped on, too, right next to Fatima, and screamed again, Get ready. She noticed Fatima flinch, and stopped. Stopped singing, stopped dancing, stopped walking. Just stopped. Dead in her tracks in the middle of the sidewalk her face becoming loose, sloshy. That afternoon, when Fatima's parents came home from work, they were ready to ask her about her first walk home, but noticed her hobbling. Fatima had already cleaned up the wounds with alcohol, yikes, and put band-aids on both kneecaps. Why are you walking like that, Fati? Her mother asked Fatima in as Fatima inched her way into her mother's hug. I tripped on the way home, landed hard. Fatima explained, still a little embarrassed. And there was this bus full of kids who laughed, she went on. But she left out the part about the woman in the pink pants because she knew that if she told her mother, her mother would tell her father and that would be the end of walking. That would be the end to a babysitterless life. Back to cheese toast snack time and other coffee kids whining about what they want to watch on TV. And she didn't want that because even though the first walk was rough, anything was worth trying again if that if 
it meant she could come home and be alone in her house, where she could microwave nuggets and pretend to be a flight attendant like her father. A life jacket is in the pocket under your seat. To put it on, place it over your head. Clip on the waistband and pull it tight. Please do not inflate it while you are still inside the aircraft. An evacuation slide and life raft are at each door. Your crew will direct you to your door. Additional emergency exits are shown on the left leaflet. In case of emergency, oxygen masks will drop down in front of you. Please pull the mask down toward your face and place the mask over your mouth and nose. If you are traveling with a child, please attend to yourself first, then the child. Breathe normally. She had that memorized when she was little. She had heard her father say different versions of it through the years. Whether it was, in case of emergency, the bath water is in front of you. Please pull your washcloth down toward your face and scrub over your mouth and nose. Or, please do not poop while your butt is still in the underwater. An evacuation slide and lift raft are at each door. And by that I mean, use the toilet. Then he'd do a two-finger point to the bathroom. I keep telling you, you have to pay attention, sweetheart, her mother said now. You have to look both ways and always. That even includes, despite what your dad says, down. The next day, Fatima looked down the whole time. Studied the ground with such concentration, she didn't notice the clouds forming above her head. The rain came almost at the exact spot where the crack was that had clipped her the day before. Came by the bucketful. Drenched her in seconds. And as the same bus crept by, the same kids smashed their faces to the glass. They laughed and pointed again. Predictable. The boy with the lisp splattered spit in onto the window, wiped it clean with his sleeve. The boy behind him sat with a notebook up to his face again. No jokes in his eyes. And the singing lady was there, came bopping down the street like it wasn't raining. She was singing, but the rain was louder than her voice. This time, she was wearing a tuxedo and top hat, and was carrying a closed umbrella. She extended, to, she extended it to Fatima. You play guitar, she asked. Huh? Fatima was confused. There was no guitar. Do you play the guitar, she asked again, this time strumming the closed umbrella. And before Fatima could answer, the lady said, Yeah, you do. You play it. I can always tell. Ha! Benny can always tell. The lady, Benny, extended the umbrella again. Fatima took it this time, opened it, and Benny said, Wow! Sounds amazing! Bobbing her head and snapping her fingers to nothing. It's your solo. Go, go. Put on the show for the people. Benny stopped walking, waved, and cheered for Fatima, who played nothing, just held the umbrella over her head and walked faster. Nothing changes, Fati, at least nothing major, Fatima's mother explained that evening over dinner. She worked as some kind of environmental scientist, so everything for her was like this. If you see clouds, expect rain. If you see cracks, lift your feet. If you see houses, expect them to be the same houses every day, because houses don't move, they don't change. Routine lessens risk, her father chimed in, scarfing his food because he had a flight to catch. Routine lessens risk. And Fatima was tired of the risky stuff. The tripping, the rain. She needed this walk home to be one she could predict, so that she could get there safely. That night, she thought about the boy with the notebook. The one on the bus sitting behind the spitty one. She thought about how he hid behind the spiral and lined paper. How it sometimes made him feel safer, less out there. At least that's what Fatima thought. So she decided to use a notebook to try to do the same. To write down things in her life so she could pay attention to how they stayed the same and know whenever they changed, so that she could be ready for what that change might bring. Her mother did this all the time with her experiments, always taught her to do this with her science projects over the years. In order for us to know how these plants grow in natural sunlight, as opposed to how they grow under the house lights, we have to write down every single constant and every single variable, then record all progress, every leaf, every inch, every day. She preached just a year before all this. So the next day, the moment the bell rang, Fatima's data collection began, an ongoing list of things that almost never changed. The bell, the hallway, the locker, the lock, the door, the corner, the crossing guard, the houses, the signs, and the singing lady, Benny, who since then has stayed the same in that she's changed every single day. 37 continued. Today, Benny's dressed in a black wig. The hair is straight and falls just to her chin, and she has on a sky blue dress and combat boots. Difference. She's singing a song that goes, Run away, child, running wild, better go back home where you belong. Difference. She's doing dance steps. One looks like she's shoveling the ground, like she's digging. 38. I speak to her. 39. She speaks to me. Call me. Calls me. Fatima the dreamer. Says dreamer. 
like Dreama. 40. I ask her how she's doing. She says fine. Difference. She tells me she saw a school bus fall from the sky. 41. She always says stuff like that. 42. She asks me if anything's different today. 43. I tell her about Trista Smith and Britton Burns running out of class faster than usual, and how I have homework. I have to imagine myself as something else for Miss Broom's class. Also, pointing to the roses missing from house number eight. Thought Benny would pull one from behind her back or from under her wig, which is something Benny would do. She'd probably call it a microphone. 44. Benny nods. Different. And started mumbling. But how are you going to change the world? How are you going to change the world? 45. Benny walks with me. Difference. Now screaming. How are you going to change the world? How are you going to change the world? How are you going to change the world? 46. I ignore Benny. I keep counting the houses. Difference. Benny won't stop. This is not a song. 47. I keep counting the cracks. Difference. Benny is still screaming as the bus drives by. Screams, there it is. But I don't look. I don't want to see if anyone is laughing at Benny. At me. 48. I keep counting the signs. Difference. I can barely hear myself think, even though the signs have been there all day. 49. I stop at house number 15, one block from my house, usually where Benny leaves me. Difference. Benny runs in front of me, leans against the stop sign, and asks, Fatima, I'm serious. How you gonna change the world? 50. I look both ways. Difference. Then I think about Miss Broom's assignment. What could I be? What do I wish I could become to change the world? I think about telling Benny I want my... I might want to be a wet cement to fill the cracks in the sidewalk. Not to hide, but to stop someone else from tripping. Or maybe I'd be an umbrella to keep rain from someone's head. Keep someone dry in a storm. But I don't say none of that to Benny, because I don't think of either of those things would change the world. So I tell her I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to change the world. Then ask her if she'd maybe let me borrow one of her instruments to play.